Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preen week. So, you guys probably don't need me to tell you this since it's pretty obvious, but there is a huge pandemic happening in the world right now. I thought this pandemic had already hit its peak last year, but the more time I spend online, the more I realize that we're going to be stuck with this pandemic for a very long time. So, I know this is not what you Chooms want me to hear me talk about, but we have to address the elephant in the room and talk about the ongoing pandemic that is threatening us all. All. That, of course, is the pandemic of DHT simping. For some reason, DHT simping has been a plague in the online manosphere for the past several years. Nobody really knows exactly why or where it started, but my hypothesis on this is that sometime during the early days of social media, basically the late 2000s, a bunch of bald internet tough guys were starting to notice that more and more men were saving their hair through the use of finasteride. This made these male internet basement dwellers feel very jealous and insecure about their own failures to save their own hair, which eventually manifested into resentment against finasteride users. So, they decided that the best way to cope with being bald, miserable slapheads was to try to tie the trash hormone DHT to their very masculinity, and they continue to do whatever they possibly can to dissuade men from using finasteride, even though it is the only treatment that has ever been clinically proven to stop hair loss in both the short and the long term. So, what exactly is DHT simping, and who are these DHT simps? Well, to put it simply, a DHT simp is usually a lonely male who is most often a millennial or Generation Z, although occasionally you'll see some Generation X DHT simps as well. DHT simps from the boomer generation, however, are a rarity, since boomers often suffer from an enlarged prostate, so they'll be the first ones to agree that DHT is a trash hormone, regardless of whether or not they are losing their hair. A DHT simp is rarely found in public, since they seldom leave their computer desk unless it is to grab more Mountain Dew, Hot Pockets, and Doritos. The DHT simp is hopelessly addicted to social media, constantly seeking the dopamine rush he gets from winning internet arguments and seeing other losers approve of his incel rants against SJWs and feminazis. In the rare event when the DHT simp isn't busy ranting about things like woke culture ruining video games or Disney movies, the DHT simp will then get sucked into these weird algorithmic bubbles in online communities that help better confirm his biases against finasteride. After spending hundreds, if not thousands of hours online arguing with 14-year-olds on Reddit, 4chan, Fortnite, World of Warcraft, and Facebook, they'll have amassed a massive arsenal of rodent studies, biased opinion pieces, and forum posts that they'll deploy without mercy against anyone who dares to disagree with them. So, being that the beliefs of DHT simps are not mainstream in any scientific or medical community, it is also not unusual to see them develop a distrust of anything mainstream and then take a contrarian position which leads them down a rabbit hole of paranoid conspiratorial thinking about big pharma which they use to dismiss anything that doesn't confirm their biases. Such is the case with their fraudulent idea that DHT is some critically important hormone, which of course it isn't. The idea that DHT is important in adulthood is not a belief supported by most researchers. As such, it is not uncommon to see DHT simping in communities that promote conspiracy theories and pseudoscience. So to put it simply, a DHT simp is someone who requires other people to see things the way they do in order to validate their own failures fighting hair loss. So how do they go about this? Well, they do it in a few different ways. Number one, DHT simps exaggerate the side effect profile of finasteride. They will rely on poorly conducted research usually involving animal studies. A popular example of this is claiming that finasteride affects our cognition and well-being because of its alleged suppression of neurosteroids. The problem with this is they'll rely on rodent studies where the rodents in question will be on doses dozens if not hundreds of times higher than what a human being would use. Also, Finasteride suppresses the type 1 5-AR enzyme in rodents, while finasteride only has minimal effects on the type 1 5-AR enzyme in humans. The reason this is important is that the type 1 5-AR isoenzyme is what synthesizes neurosteroids in the brain. So, rodent studies of finasteride on brain neurosteroid levels can't be applied to human beings. I went over this in several videos that I'll link below if you want more details. Number two. DHT simps like to tell half-truths. They'll say something like, DHT is the most potent engine in the body. 
So this is true, but it is very misleading without the proper context. Yes, DHT is about eight times more androgenic than testosterone, but DHT levels are only about a tenth of testosterone levels in adult men. Also, about 99% of circulating DHT is protein bound, and DHT has a higher binding affinity to sex hormone binding protein than testosterone does. The result is that circulating DHT contributes very little, if anything, to androgen effects in men. Although circulating DHT does have roles in utero and during early adolescence, DHT's effects in adulthood are paracrine, not endocrine, meaning DHT is only active in the tissues where it is produced, like the scalp, prostate, and skin, where of course it only does bad things like cause an enlarged prostate, acne, and of course, hair loss. Number three. DHT simps harass and insult people who take finasteride. They cannot tolerate people who have had a good experience with finasteride, so they'll do whatever they can to shut them up, even if that means resorting to outright bullying and name-calling. They'll challenge the masculinity of people using finasteride by accusing them of taking tranny drugs, or they'll use alt-right buzzwords like cuck. Or they'll baselessly accuse them of lying about their good experience, ironically accusing them of trying to cope, when in reality, the only people who are coping are are the DHT simps themselves who are doing everything they can to cope with their shitty balding scalp that exists because they were too dickless to use finasteride when they still had a chance. They know that the facts aren't on their side, so they'll verbally abuse finasteride users in order to shut them up. Number four. Lastly, they'll just outright lie about the benefits of DHT or the dangers of suppressing it, which brings us to the topic of today's video. Does DHT play any important role in building muscle and strength, and does suppressing DHT with finasteride have any risk of hurting muscular development or athletic performance? Of course, you ask any DHT simp this question, and they'll tell you, yes, absolutely, of course. They'll act like DHT is critical, and if you see anyone who is strong who uses finasteride, it is just because they're on steroids or they're lying about it or something. Well, the purpose of this channel is to cut through the bullshit and answer questions like this using the results of research, not the opinions of DHT simps. So, what does the research show on this subject? Well, the first thing to find out is since DHT is a paracrine hormone, whether muscle actually contains the 5-AR enzyme that can convert circulating testosterone into dihydrotestosterone, DHT. Well, back in 1993, the question of what tissues contained 5-AR was first raised. Now, at the time, the type 3 5-AR isoenzyme had not yet been discovered, and techniques used to detect the type 1 and type 2 isoenzymes were somewhat primitive by today's standards. In this study, the researchers looked at the 5-AR enzyme activity of different human tissues. What is striking about this table here is that of all the tissues, skeletal muscle was the only one that showed no 5-AR activity at all. In this article on the 5-AR isoenzyme, 14 studies on the different 5-AR isoenzymes were reviewed, and in only one of them was any evidence of the 5-AR enzyme found in muscle. In that particular study, messenger RNA for both the type 2 and type 3 isoenzymes was found in skeletal muscle tissue, and actually the type 3 isoenzyme has been found in pretty much all tissues in the body. However, the role of the type 3 isoenzyme is still not well understood, and it may have other roles besides converting testosterone into DHT. So, the data is conflicting as to whether there are any 5-AR enzymes in skeletal muscle tissue, but if there is a small amount of the 5-AR in skeletal muscle, does it convert enough testosterone into DHT locally to play any role in muscle strength or hypertrophy? Well. In muscle biopsies taken from patients with neuromuscular diseases, no significant conversion of testosterone into DHT was found, implying there is little or no 5-AR activity in muscle. Also, another study looking at human muscle extracts found that only 0.28% of radioactively labeled testosterone was converted into DHT in skeletal muscle, which is a very, very tiny amount. So. It looks like there is minimal, if any, 5-AR activity in skeletal muscle, and there is little or no conversion of testosterone into DHT in skeletal muscle tissue. Now, this, of course, is all very theoretical, and there are rat studies that we can look at on the effects of DHT on rat muscle strength, but let's skip the rat studies for once and get right to what's important, and that's studies on real intact human beings like you and me. So. It turns out there are several human studies that have examined whether or not DHT is important for developing muscle strength. But first, 
I very briefly need to mention an article I've talked about several times in my videos. It's this article from 1974 that first described families in the Dominican Republic that had a congenital lack of the type 2 5-air isoenzyme. Despite lacking the type 2 5-air enzyme after puberty, these men still had normal muscular development. And indeed, there is even an Olympic-level athlete with this syndrome named Castor Semenya. This is very interesting, but it is still just evidence from observations. That isn't all we have, though. There are also randomized trials looking at whether DHT is important for muscular development. The first one is this one right here from 2012. In this study, 129 healthy men between the ages of 18 and 50 were randomized to receive supplemental testosterone plus a placebo or supplemental testosterone plus dutasteride at a high dose of 2.5 milligrams per day. Keep in mind, that is five times higher than the standard dose used for hair loss. Dutasteride is a better choice than finasteride for a study like this because it actually blocks all three 5-air isoenzymes, unlike finasteride, which predominantly blocks the type 2 isoenzyme, and so it decreases DHT more than finasteride overall, especially at 2.5 milligrams per day. Anyways, the results of the study showed that there was absolutely no difference in fat-free muscle mass or in strength between the group getting dutasteride versus the group getting a placebo. That's right, testosterone supplements had the exact same effect regardless of whether or not testosterone could be converted into DHT. But you might be thinking right now, but Kevin, these men were getting testosterone supplements. Maybe DHT is important for muscle strength, but only when men have natural physiological levels of testosterone. Well, don't despair, Chooms. We have a study for that situation, too. It's this study right here. In this study, 60 men who were hypogonadal, meaning they had the testosterone levels of Jason Blaha, received just enough testosterone in order to achieve normal physiological levels. In addition to this, the men were randomized to receive either finasteride at 5 mg per day or a placebo. That is five times higher than the finasteride dose someone would use for hair loss. So, after 12 months, there were increases in fat-free mass, muscle strength, and bone density that were equal in both groups, regardless of whether or not they were on finasteride. So once again, blocking the 5-air enzyme had no effect on muscle development, this time with normal physiological levels of testosterone. Finally, we have this interesting study that looked at the effect of 5-air suppression on muscle development in trans men. So in this study, 16 trans men received 54 weeks of testosterone injections, and there were randomized to receive either a placebo or dutasteride at the extremely high dose of 5 milligrams per day. So you can be sure that at that dose, there was almost a complete blockade of all three 5-air isoenzymes, although it is not possible to completely eliminate all DHT from the body since there is always a small amount of DHT made by what's called the backdoor pathway. Anyways, we're talking about eliminating as much of a DHT effect as possible by suppressing the 5-air enzyme to the max. So, the results of the study were similar to the other studies I already mentioned. Specifically, the study showed that hand grip and lower limb strength improved equally in both groups. The researchers concluded, quote, for the first time, we demonstrated that the addition of the 5A type 1 and 2 inhibitor dutasteride does not impair the anabolic effects of testosterone on muscle and trans men previously exposed to testosterone, supporting the hypothesis that DHT conversion is not essential for this role, unquote. I would add that since dutasteride is a strong suppressor of the type 3 5AR isoenzyme, that this study and the other study I mentioned that used dutasteride both show that the 5AR enzymes do not play a role in muscle strength whatsoever. However, I think some of the confusion about DHT and muscle strength has to do with the fact that there are anabolic steroids derived from DHT that are used for bodybuilding. When any of these steroids are used, they are just being used as supplemental androgens, and any anabolic steroid, whether it is derived from DHT or testosterone, would work in those circumstances. But when we are talking about natural physiological levels of testosterone and DHT, it's clear from the research that you can take either finasteride or dutasteride and still work at the gym and make significant gains. These drugs will not interfere with muscular strength and conditioning. I mean, just think about it. If finasteride was really so detrimental to strength and performance, do you really think that WADA, the World Anti-Doping Association, would have needed to ban it? Finasteride was banned by WADA in 2005 because it could be used as a steroid masking agent, and there have even been cases of athletes getting temporary suspensions for having the drug in their system, such as NHL player Jose Theodora and Italian professional golfer Alessandro Pasilli. 
ban was eventually lifted, but the point stands. Finasteride is also used by a lot of Hollywood movie stars, including Rob Lowe, who still has a perfect head of hair in his 50s, as well as by Ashton Kutcher and Bradley Cooper. It's not confirmed, but I am willing to bet other actors who are in fantastic shape, like Henry Cavill and Chris Evans, are also using finasteride, since they pretty much maintained a Norwood 2 hairline for the past decade or so. Quite a contrast if you compare how fast someone like Jude Law's hairline vanished in the span of just a few years. The underlying point here is that if finasteride really was so detrimental to strength, then people who are required to maintain strength and muscle, like professional athletes, models, and movie stars, wouldn't touch finasteride with a 10-foot pole. Finasteride has been on the market since 1992, and not once Ever during the clinical trials or during any independently conducted follow-up studies has there ever been any evidence that the drug is detrimental to strength, muscle, or athletic performance in any way whatsoever. The bottom line is this is just another tactic that DHT simps are using to try to fearmonger you into joining them in their misery. More than anything, they want you to fail. They want you to fail so that they can use you as a prop they can bring up in their internet arguments in order to better reassure themselves and others that their decision not to use finasteride was the correct one. The truth is, these DHT simps don't care about you. They hate the idea that they could have saved their hair if only they weren't such dickless cowards and actually started finasteride when they still had a chance. DHT simps want you to fail because misery loves company. Don't buy their lies and don't give in to their bullying. Just because they've wasted their lives doesn't mean you have to. No matter what they tell you or no matter how much they insult you, deep down they're just bald cells who are jealous of you and they fucking know it. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time, Chooms. God bless.